Is The Chosen a Mormon show? Is Dallas Jenkins a heretic? Join us here this week on Explain as we talk about this and many other things. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Explain, where we engage the culture from a biblical perspective in a manner which glorifies God. And this week, we are going to be talking about that show that uh, you guys probably all know about at this point, The Chosen. The Chosen. Uh, And what is The Chosen for uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe if you've been living under a rock, uh, (laughs) I'll explain what The Chosen is. The Chosen is basically, it's a a show that uh, was put out by uh, a guy named Dallas Jenkins. He's the the producer, uh, manager of the show, um, along with a, a team of other people, uh, some some pretty uh, established, well established actors and stuff. He got for the cast, and the show basically is supposed to chronicle the life of Jesus and his disciples and it is a multi-season show i think they're in season four currently um or they're they're uh they're releasing uh season four in theaters currently and i think they just got done doing that and uh, i'm sure that stuff will probably also be released to streaming although i'm not a hundred percent certain on that so so now we come to this the, the 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 weird thing about the chosen is there's this there's this 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 underpinning or uh, maybe just this this conversation, this dialogue that's been happening in the background for a couple of years now where people are constantly accusing the chosen of being a Mormon show. And Dallas Jenkins constantly continues to uh, do one of two things. Either he pushes back sometimes or then sometimes he'll just say things um uh, that I think are purposely inflammatory and make people think even more that it is a uh, Mormon show or or whatever. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, uh, and, and, and when we talk about is The Chosen a Mormon show, um, I'm going to... Obviously, obviously the show has some Christian elements in it, and it's basically supposed to be based off of uh, the story of Jesus, um, as we see it in the Bible, um, I guess there, you know, a lot of times they are drawing from that. So, um, from the outset, does it have features of, uh, Mormonism or whatever, uh, that, uh, that, that are exclusive to Mormonism? That's, that's really what we're, what we're trying to get at. Because of course, of course, the chosen, because it's supposed to be about Jesus and his disciples is, is going to have elements that are, that are at least viewed as Christian because it's talking about, you know, the story of the scriptures. Hopefully you guys know what I'm, what I'm saying when I say that, um, we're looking, we're, we're, we're looking to see specifically, uh, if there is anything Mormon about this show, um, and and really the this this was brought up by a post from a Mormon about the chosen, and I really think that it's important to address this. Um, so let's let's look at that now. Um, this this post is by a guy named Brian Moody. Um, I'm looking at his profile right now. It says that he is conservative. Uh, You know, the profile where it says, like, I don't know, it tells you to describe yourself or talk about yourself or whatever. His profile says that he's conservative. And then the second thing in his profile is LDS, which stands for the Church of Latter-day Saints, which that's Mormon. That's that's uh, that's what Mormon the Mormon church has rebranded themselves as these days. So anyway, Brian Moody, this is what he says about Dallas Jenkins. I heard Dallas Jenkins on the uh, conserve conserve Malen, which that's um, that's Ali Beth Stuckey's tag. We talked about Ali Beth Stuckey last week. Ali Beth Stuckey at one point was on, uh, or or rather, Ali Beth Stuckey at one point had Dallas Jenkins on her podcast, and she uh, she interviewed him about these things. Um, And she's more conservative, obviously, and uh, so it's interesting to see what Brian Moody has to say about this. I heard Dallas Jenkins on the Ali Beth Stuckey podcast hedge his statements on the church and act much more cautiously. He did not clearly defend the church and our beliefs. 
Now, I don't, I don't know if there's anything to this. You guys can correct me if, in the comments if I'm wrong. But it is very interesting that, um, that both times um, in this opening paragraph here for Brian Moody, he's capitalizing the word church. And I think that's supposed to be a reference to specifically the Mormon church. Um, and a, again, you know, further down, uh, further down in this post, you see again talking about the church. And, and then he says, our beliefs. So, um, yeah, he's, he, it, it, it would seem there that that's a reference to the Mormon church. Anyway, he says, I'm glad to see this bolder position defending Latter-day Saints. Thank you, Dallas. We've done so much for the chosen to being this show to life. Oh, okay. That, I think I think he doesn't mean being. I think he I think that was a typo. To bring this show to life, I think would be what he's trying to say there. It's only fair he stand up and defend the church. I know it's hard in his position, and it's probably not a fight he was looking for when he went down this whole path making the chosen, but God has called him to it, and he's facing up to it like a man with integrity should and must do. Okay, so the the, the overarching thing I want you to see very clearly, this is, ver this is something that's very clear, no matter what you think about him capitalizing the word church, that really does not matter to what we're talking about here. Um, Brian Moody is a Mormon who is defending Dallas Jenkins, and really, the, the we we have Mormons that are that are claiming Dallas Jenkins as their own, right? This guy, he's claiming Dallas Jenkins as as his own, as a defender. And um, when you look at the Mormon Church, and a, a Mormon can look at someone who is uh, who professes to be a Christian, and then say, "Well, there's no difference between me and and him, and he's he's my he's my friend who defends me all the time against Christians, um, you know, defends my theology against Christians." Then uh, that's 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 a problem, right? And so this was what initially piqued my interest to. Uh, finally say, you know what, I've seen so much about this, I really just want to investigate it and see what in the world is going on. Now we have Mormons claiming Dallas Jenkins as their own, as as a defender of their uh, their whole movement. And um, the wording of the of the post may have been a little bit confusing, but basically what he said was he, he saw Dallas Jenkins on the Alley Bet Stucky podcast where Dallas Jenkins was very cautious and reserved about... Um, you know, just coming out and saying, yeah, I love the Mormon church and support them and they're right in their doctrine, for example. You know, he didn't say that on the Ali Beth Stucky podcast. However, um, what, what when you look at the second paragraph here, it says, I'm glad to see this bolder position defending Latter-day Saints. Um, and you look at the post that Brian Moody has attached to his post. It is a post from Protestia. Now this is this is where it gets very interesting. So Protestia, as you know, we've we've dealt with them before. Um, they're a very reliable Christian news source. Um, this is what they said on the Mormon podcast, Saints Unscripted. Dallas Jenkins laments that Latter Day Saints have a poor reputation with evangelicals and gets real explicit about how much he and Mormons love the same Jesus. So, so that's what Brian Moody is referencing here, uh, that basically it seems that, and this is something that has been happening for a little while now, it seems like Dallas Jenkins is maybe playing both sides of the fence here. Like when he talks to Mormons, he's like, yeah, you know, we're the, we're the same. But then when he talks to Christians, he, he won't say that Christians and Mormons are the same, for example. You know, he's, he's much more cautious about saying things like that. Um, and so... I guess the question becomes then, what do we make of this? What do we make of the fact that you have this um, uh, this producer of a show that markets itself to a Christian audience that that um, uh, that is clearly telling a story that's rooted in Christianity, that's at least attempting to tell a story that bases itself in Christianity, right? Um, you know, what do you make of the fact that he's like saying that Mormons um, look at love the same Jesus? That's what's what it says. How how he and Mormons love the same Jesus. Um, so, I of of course I I wanted to look a little further into that to see what exactly he he's talking about. Like what did what did he mean when he said that? Um, 
So if you look at the article from Protestia, if you if you click on that link that's um, that's in there, um, the article comes up and it says. Um, the chosen director, Dallas Jenkins, again articulated in a new interview with Alan Parr that he loves the same Jesus that, he, that his Mormon friends do, demonstrating again and again why he has a false understanding of Jesus in the gospel. Now, let me just say, Alan Parr is actually, that's that's interesting, that's an interesting detail as well, is uh, Alan Parr is a, you know, I, I, of course, I'm not going to agree with him on every theological point, but by and large, he is a solid Christian. Um and uh, a, a very outspoken Christian. And so it is interesting that Dallas Jenkins went on Alan Parr's podcast and said that. Um, I don't have any information on how Alan, how Alan Parr responded to that. Um, I can maybe guess how he responded to that, but um, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I guess I'd like to know more about that. Um, but just re- really quick, uh, I would really recommend that you click on the article from Protestia because they have a lot of really good information about why the Mormon church is um, is different than the Christian church, right? And, and that is that is important to get into. And we'll talk about that later on. Um, but then, you know, if you look if you look further down in the article with Protestia, um, they quote him once again as saying, I'm happy to say, yeah, we disagree on some things, but I'm going to die on the hill of we love the same Jesus and we want the same Jesus known to the world. Um, you know, and then and then, of course, it, it, it continues, right? That there's, there's so much here. Um, What's funny about the LDS folks is you guys seem to be, even though you're the most controversial, you seem to be the least confrontational. It's just like, hey, we all love Jesus. I just want to let you know we love the show. And when people start going, hey, you're a Mormon, you're going to hell, you're just like, hey, whatever. It's just like it seems to roll off your back. Maybe it's because you're used to being on the outside sometimes. I'm learning so much about your faith tradition and and uh, da, 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 da. I don't I don't even think I don't think the rest is oh okay th- th- let's look further down the the story of Jesus we do agree on and we love the same Jesus that's not something that you often hear uh, sometimes it's like oh they believe in a different Jesus than we do and then the host of course uh, even recognizes how controversial that is and says that's a controversial statement and. Uh, then he says, yeah, no, it's the same. I will sink or swim on that statement, and it's controversial, and I don't mind getting criticized at all for the show, and I don't mind being called a blasphemer. I don't like it when my LDS friends are. And I make it very clear that if I go down, I'm going down swinging, protecting my friends and my brothers and sisters. And so I don't deny we have a lot of theological differences, but we love the same Jesus. Okay. So again, the, the question becomes, what, what do we make of this? Because there's a lot of very uh, concerning things in that, um, in, in, in that one uh, quote from Dallas Jenkins in that he was, you know, in, in which he was interviewed. Uh, you know, what, what do you make of that? And the question, I guess, becomes the first thing that we have to run to, of course, is the scriptures. So we look at Dallas Jenkins' claim that we love the Christians love the same Jesus as Mormons. Is that true? Well, the answer, of course, is no. The answer, of course, is no. Let's look at a couple of scriptures, some of which will uh, probably be very familiar to you. Okay, um, you know what's the most uh, what's the most common verse in the Bible? The one that everybody quotes. Even a lot of non Christians know this verse. John three sixteen. All right, John three sixteen. What does John three sixteen say? For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And I want to focus on that word only. He gave his only Son. He gave his only Son. Now, of course, you know, some have made the argument that that word only could mean unique or one of a kind. Uh, But I think even if you do believe that, that doesn't change the point of what's being said here. Jesus is... He, he is different than all others, right? He's different from everybody else. Why is he different? You know, he like he for example, he walks around on the earth, right? When he walks around on the earth, 
Why is he different from everybody else? Because he's God. He's fully God, fully man, right? That's, that's the doctrine of the hypostatic union. You have Christ, when he comes to earth, he's fully God and fully man. All right, let's keep going. Uh, verse 18 of John 3. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. Okay, again, same thing. You know, you talk about uh, that, that word only, right? We're, we're making a very clear point here that Christ is the Son of God. Of course, you know, we talk about adoption, being adopted into Christ's, you know, into the family of God. In that sense, of course, we are all children of of God, but we're not children of God. Not uh, I'm not a son of God in the same way that Christ is the Son of God, right? And so that's why you know, like even if you do argue that uh, that that word only would mean unique, um, even if that even if you do argue that that is the case, that doesn't change the point of what's being said here. That Christ is the Son of God in a way that none of the rest of us. Are all right. Um, and I want you to. I want you to keep these in mind. Let's jump over to John chapter one. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. That's John one fourteen. Again, we look at Jesus. He is the Son of God in a way that nobody else is. A Again, I'm, you know, I keep saying it until I'm blue in the face. When, you know, when we're adopted into the family of God, like Ephesians talks about being adopted into the family of God, adoption as sons. Um, you know, Romans talks about the spirit of adoption as sons. Galatians talks about the spirit of adoption as sons, right? So, of course, you know, we have been adopted into the family of God, certainly, as his sons and daughters. Yes, but we are not the sons and daughters of God in the same sense that Jesus is the Son of God, okay? Did you catch that? So that's very important when we look at what the Mormon church believes about Jesus. Now, first of all, the Mormon church believes, and you can you can look at that, um, that post, that uh, article, rather, from Protestia. Again, that gives you some, some basics about why the Jesus that they worship is different. They believe that Jesus was just a regular man at one point. They believe that uh, also that they believe that Jesus was the spirit brother of Satan, of, of, of Lucifer, I think is how they put it. Um, and so even in that sense, um, th that would take away Jesus's otherness as the Son of God, and we need to we need to guard that with everything we have, the fact that Jesus is the Son of God in the sense that none of the rest of us are, okay? And so, so even in that sense, if you are worshiping a Jesus that is not uh, defined in the Scriptures, if you're worshiping a Jesus that you define differently than the Scriptures define him, then you're not worshiping Jesus, Okay, you've you've created a, a figment of your imagination and you're worshiping that. Okay, that is that is so important because we want to make sure that we are submitted to the scriptures. And when you come up with uh, doctrines like Jesus was the spirit brother of Satan or Jesus was just a man at one point um, or something like that, that's that that's not from the scriptures that demonstrates that, that you're not. Um, that demonstrates that you're not submitted to what the scriptures have to say. All right? So I want to make that very clear. No, Mormons and Christians do not worship the same Jesus. And there are plenty of other reasons why uh, Mormons come out of orthodoxy. Specifically, their doctrine of justification is, is not justification by faith alone. Right? They t there, there, is a, there is a verse that, that the Mormons have um, in their sacred text um, which is basically, you know, it, it would appear to be a, a redo or a reworking of Ephesians 2, where uh, Ephesians 2 says, by great, for us, says, by grace you save through faith, and this is not of yourself, okay? But in, in, the, in the Mormon text, it says, by grace you save through faith, after all you can do, right? So, that, of course, that, and, and that's, that's 
you know, we're talking about their Christology today. You know, we're not talking about what they think about salvation, but that is important as well. Okay, so no, Mormons do not worship the same Jesus. And so what do we say about Dallas Jenkins then? We have to say one of two things, okay? The bottom line is his Christology is off. Dallas Jenkins' Christology is wrong, okay? Uh, and, and that would be either knowingly or unknowingly, okay? So either he knows that his Christology is off and he doesn't care, all right? Which that would be very bad. I'm not saying either one of these. Th I'm not. I'm not saying yes or no on either one of these things. But it is one of them. The other option is that uh, J Dallas Jenkins' Christology is off, and he's ignorant of that fact, or he doesn't understand why it's off, or um, he he he's not. Um, he, he doesn't see where his Christology goes against the scriptures. He doesn't see why saying that Mormons um, worship the same Jesus as Christians is wrong, right? He doesn't, he doesn't understand that. Either way, either way, you have the producer of a show about Jesus and his disciples whose Christology is off whose Christology, whether he knows it and means it or not, is not in line with the scriptures. Okay? Now, that is very problematic. That, that is problematic no matter how you dice it up. And I, I think in light of that, I cannot publicly endorse the chosen. Um, and... I would say another thing I've noticed is they've they've continued to do things as the seasons have gone on that have been more and more um, unnerving for a Christian, right? Um, and so uh, again, because of that, I would I would think, and I'm not, not again, I'm not saying that, um, that that this is set in stone or anything, or that this is something that's definitely going to happen. But I've seen comments from Dallas Jenkins that he plans to put even more uh, things in the, you know, the upcoming seasons, which are at best confusing and at worst disrespectful to Christ, right? And um, that's without even like, I mean, the purpose of this show today was to address the Christology side of the chosen. Um, I'm hoping we're going to get everybody together here at Your Kingdom Come for kind of like a roundtable type of thing. Um, you know, we had promised way back at the beginning of the year that we would do a Friday night show type of thing. And we're working on that. But one of the topics that we've talked about is just kind of get together and let's hash out what we think about the chosen, right? Because you've, you've got people talking about all other sorts of things about the chosen as well, not just Christology, which is a big deal, um, as it relates to the Mormon church and stuff. Uh, but, but also, uh, there was like an LGBTQ flag on set and there, you know, there were people that were going nuts about that and even actors that were going nuts about that. Um, and, uh, also there was a, um, our stance on the LGBTQ thing is clear. We've got plenty of episodes on that. No, we don't support it. We think it's a sin, all that stuff. Yes. But what the scriptures say about the LGBTQ stuff, we affirm uh, we, we, we affirm the scriptures. We don't affirm the LGBTQ stuff. We affirm what the scriptures have to say instead. Um, that aside, they also, there was also an issue with the, the, the chosen. So you've got the, the LGBTQ thing, you've got the, the, the Mormon thing. Um, and then there, there was another thing as well, um, that, that people were kind of going nuts about. Um, it'll come back to me at some point. Um, for some reason, I can't remember what the other thing was uh, at this point. But you've got, um, oh, that's right, that's right. The other thing that people have been saying um, was the second second commandment violation. So some people claim that because you have Jesus, you, you have a man acting as Jesus, it puts a picture in people's mind that might not be consistent with who Jesus actually is. Um, and so that's like a second commandment violation. Um Without even getting into all those things, like we would love to get into those things in a later podcast. Right now, we're talking about the Christology of the Chosen as it relates to uh, Mormonism. But even in light of the Christology, I can't publicly endorse the Chosen at this point because of that, because I, I don't trust what the director is going to do. Um, 
And I think the sad thing is, you know, people look to the chosen to fill, to fill a void in Christian entertainment um, because uh, oftentimes, uh, for some reason, Christian entertainment can fall short of, um, in, in quality, I'm saying, of what the world has to offer. And many people have said that. That's not just me. Um, you know, as far as you know, technology and how advanced uh, the production of certain things and certain films and movies and shows are, um, the Christian world always seems to be lagging behind in that. And we need to do better at that, right? So, of course, you have The Chosen come out and everybody, everybody flocks to it because it's like, hey, a Christian show that's being produced well, um, you know, as far as, um, you know, the, uh, the, the technology side of it, the production side of it. Um, you know, that's people are going to find that attractive. Even Christians, I could I could understand how Christians would find that attractive and start flocking to that. So we need to do better at that. And I think actually Canon Press, um, I would I would 100 percent recommend the stuff that they have to bring to the table because they're trying to do that. And I commend them for it. Um, you know, they're trying to do it in a Christian way that honors God. Um, so are there good things in The Chosen? Well, uh, by definition of the fact that it's a story about Christ, they're going to fall into some good things every now and then. You know, they're going to, you know, they're going to all of a sudden in one scene, they're going to depict Peter in a way that seems pretty accurate, that the audience can kind of feel along with how Peter feels or something like that. Right. So, of course, yeah, they're going to run into stuff, but it's like the if, if you if you don't have your Christology right, it's like the broken clock that's right twice a day. Right. Um and so, you know, many bad things can all of a sudden accidentally have good things in them, right? Um, but I would not, um, this is my final recommendation here for The Chosen, until further review, you know, until, until something drastically changes, um, which I don't think it will, unfortunately. Um, I would not watch The Chosen unless you're watching it from the position of a skeptic. And I'm not talking about like an atheist skeptic. I'm talking about a well-educated Christian, biblically informed worldview, where you're watching it as a Christian who understands the scriptures, who stands on the scriptures, who lives and dies on the scriptures, when you're watching it from that perspective and from a critical lens, from that perspective, through a critical lens, from that perspective, where you're saying, okay, what things is he doing? What things are wrong here, unfortunately? Right. And that would be the own, like the reaction videos to the chosen and stuff like that, where they talk about the things that are right and wrong and true and false. Like I, that, that type of stuff is what I would recommend. But anyway, uh, thank you guys for, uh, for tuning in today. Um, I appreciate you guys joining me. Uh, very, uh, heady, difficult topic, but thanks for sliding through it with me. All right. Have a good rest of your week.